How's it going fellas? How we doing? All right, so today I'm gonna show you oxygen sensors, what they are, how they work, and how you can test them at your home using any standard multimeter by yourself, all right? So first thing first, uh, let me get started by putting out there, uh, you don't need to remove these oxygen sensors from your vehicle just to test them, all right? I've done it, uh, took it off just to show you what exactly they look like. Now, uh, I've seen some uh, YouTubers, they are uh, bench testing these oxygen sensors using those propane torches and gas cutters. Let's be honest, we don't have those uh, propane torching lying around in our houses. So, uh, and uh, one another thing is there's like 30 to 40% chance uh, those propane torches might damage the tip of your oxygen sensor. So, uh, I'm gonna show you a technical method of uh, testing your oxygen sensor, you know, uh, because this is one of the vital sensors of your fuel injected vehicle. If this sensor goes bad, chances are you may lose your performance or mileage or both of them together at the same time. So. Uh, you know you can end up having a poor mileage or poor performance or you can uh, you know your engine can misfire or anything because you're running uh, you might be running rich or lean air fuel mixture so uh, this uh, oxygen sensor you can call it a lambda sensor oru sensor oxygen sensor or air fuel ratio sensor one at the same thing because that's what it does it measures the amount of oxygen left at the end of power stroke you know during the exhaust stroke when the gases come out it measures the amount of oxygen left all right so basically what this uh, sensor is, uh, this sensor is mounted inside your exhaust pipe, this uh, tip goes inside and this tip remains outside. So uh, this sensor is an oxygen voltage generator. It generates the voltage depending upon the oxygen level difference between this point and this point. The greater the difference, the greater the voltage and the voltage it varies from 0 to 1 volt DC. Now uh, like I said before, uh, you don't need to remove these oxygen sensors from your vehicle, right? I'm going to show you how to test them, but first let me put it back inside my motorcycle and then I'm going to show you how you can test them, alright? One more thing, uh, there are four different kinds of oxygen sensors available in the market. One wire, two wire, three wire and four wire. The one I've got myself over here is a four wire oxygen sensor. Uh, I'm going to show you how to test all four of them and uh, the difference is, uh, you know, oxygen sensors with the one wire and two wire, they don't have that heating element. The oxygen sensors with three wire and four wire they do have that heating element the purpose of the heating element is uh, it heats up the tip of your oxygen sensor the moment you turn your ignition on uh, that helps uh, uh, is you obtain the data really fast you know during cold starts uh, because uh, in case of one wire and two wire oxygen sensors uh, you know you're gonna have to wait for your vehicle to get heated up you know that's when you receive starts to grab the data so uh, let me put this sensor back in my motorcycle then I'm going to show you how you can test them all right okay, now as you can see I put the oxygen sensor back on you can see inside over there okay now uh, these are the connectors if your check engine light blinks let it blink I'm going to show you how you can check them now uh, the thing is uh, like I said before uh, this is a four wire oxygen sensor you can see there are two wires that are of a similar color now these two wires are always uh, belong to heating element okay uh, yours might be black both of them might be black or white or same color so I'm gonna check I'm gonna show you how to check them you know we're gonna uh, take our multimeter and we're gonna set it to 200 ohms right over here we're gonna measure the resistance of this uh, heating element it should vary from 5 to uh, 20 ohms you know you can check your manual depending upon uh, you know how much this resistance should be all right so we've got the multimeter set up and I'm gonna just plug these into point number one and two and we're about to see the resistance because uh, this is the major uh, uh, like in most of the cases you know your heating element gets fried so you might want to check your heating element in the first place all right so this is the connections I've already plugged one number one and number two is going over here you can see it's getting 10 ohms uh, now you can uh, you can check your manual about uh, your uh, resistance between these two heating element wires it can vary from 5 ohm to 20 ohms you know depending upon your uh, vehicle make and model so uh, now that we have tested uh, the heating element is fine uh, this test is only for uh, 3 and 4 wire oxygen sensors the oxygen sensors with 1 wire and 2 wire they don't have this heating element so you can skip this step in uh, those sensors right now we're gonna move to uh, we're gonna set this multimeter and up to 2000 millivolts or 2 volts all right and we're gonna plug these wires to other two wires there's a signal wire and there's a ground wire. And what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna crank up our motorcycle and we're gonna look for readings. Now you can see these two were the uh, heating element wires and we have plugged these uh, two wires to the other uh, signal wire and the ground wire. 
Now uh, we we'll set the multimeter to two volts, and we're gonna be looking at reading from zero to one volt. It's going to rise as the engine heats up. So we're gonna crank up the engine, and we're gonna be looking for uh, rise in this number. You know, if your check engine light blinks, let it blink. It's okay. So this was the test you can perform as you can see now the engine is cooling down it's gonna drop down the readings uh, now uh, this is the test you can perform you know uh, the maximum reading you're gonna get over here is 1 volt it can go up to 0 to 1 volt right so this is a uh, 20 volts this is a uh, 2 volts so you can set accordingly now I'm gonna show you uh, if it was a 3 pin sensor you know that means uh, it has a heating element 2 wires gonna be of heating element and 1 wire is gonna be signal wire so if it was a three wire sensor, you're gonna remove this one wire and you're gonna uh, put it directly to the ground. You know, you can see I've got a bolt over here. So you can put this uh, over here and you're gonna get the same reading. So if it was a two wire sensor, that means uh, it does not have that heating element and the two wires gonna be of uh, signal wires. So that means uh, these uh, two heating elements wires are gonna be missing. So that means one is a signal wire and one is a ground wire. So you can put, uh, if it was a two pin sensor, you can put it, both of the wires inside and you're gonna get readings, all right? So last, if it was a one wire sensor, that means it has uh, uh, only signal wire, it is missing both the heating element wires and the ground wire. So that means one is the signal wire and you put your uh, another ground wire to your uh, body, all right? So that's how you can test your oxygen sensor. You can see, uh, the exhaust pipe is still heated up and the readings are going down so it's going to go all the way to zero you know when your engine is gonna get cooled down so uh, if your check engine light blinks you can let it blink so this is how you check your oxygen sensor now this one is working just fine you know I was uh, suspicious that uh, my auto sensor was bad but turned out it was just a uh, low uh, coolant level so uh, this is how you check your oxygen sensor and uh, you know so you can see the readings are going down it's gonna go down all the way to zero you know after some time after an hour or so so you can wait let me know in the comment section below if i went wrong somewhere or if i skipped something you know let me know in the comment section below i'll be happy to answer all right so thank you for watching this video guys goodbye